Three, two, one. Three, two, one, launch. Did we launch? We're launched. Whoosh. Here we go. Instagram, YouTube, we're back. Welcome um, to another Friday edition. It Fancy Friday, and Fancy we forgot Friday. our snack bag. Oh, wow. That was right. Jenny gave us some Fancy Friday snacks. <sighs> our dearest friend Jenny gave us Fancy Friday snacks, and I forgot them in the morning time. We're usually kind of, now that we have a child living with us at home. Dave, As in Dave, a cat. cat. Bundling them out the door, like it's easy to forget extra things. So I have a lot of, uh, finally understand some of my parent friends. Mm -hmm. I always knew what you were going through and I have not fully encountered it because Dave still just like meows at us and doesn't communicate Let's with me. get a quick Dave update. We took him to the vet yesterday. Dave update. Dave, the cat of Wonder Fair, a stationary art supply and other things store in downtown Lawrence is orange, golden, perfect, and probably has kitty laryngitis. Might have kitty laryngitis. Um, our vet, Dr. Jennifer O'Driscoll, who I highly recommend at the cat clinic. I wouldn't take Dave anywhere else. Um, they've always been so good to us. Uh, everything else about him is looking great, except his squeak box is broken, and he makes little sad squeaks now, uh, perhaps related to having we discovered today, consumed a tiny scrap of paper. Hopefully that's all. Which well, maybe made his throat scratchy and then led to some kitty laryngitis And kitty vomit. And a kitty vomit wherein we found the tiny scrap of paper. Let's it's, hope. It's all been quite a gum shooing ordeal or puke shooing as the case may be since Paul stepped in it. Yep, it happens. Sometimes you step in cat puke, but that's so, how we found the cat puke. We're observing Dave closely. That's the update. He's got some medicine. We'll see Sorry how it goes with that. Sorry for this um, sort of grotesque. No, it's pretty vivid description yes. of Dave's medical problems, but he's doing well now. Uh, well, hard to say. He's mm -hmm. got, he's on meds. Hopefully. So we'll improving. keep people posted uh, if you'd like. Um, it is Fancy Friday, and I did want to start by showing that um, this morning... I have fancily wrapped a package and I want to shout out the person left a comment about uh, their wrapping preference that it should be bright and cheerful. That's all Which you're is my get. A game. Well, no, okay. I can be like professional, modest. I can adhere mm -hmm. to many rule sets, but bright and cheerful is my favorite. So I just want to shout out myself. Mm -hmm. Look at this. Uh, this is pretty special wrapping time. I really went, it's a local delivery, so I could go riled with a pom pom tower because it won't get squished in the mail. And I put at the top of the pom pom tower, Paul, a tiny bear a climber. Tiny little bear up there. I put a tiny bear up top. You're gonna of have this. to get that over on the Instagram it's so, so folks cute. can see this. I'm pretty excited about tiny bear climber. I feel like I checked the bright and cheerful box. Mm -hmm. Little bear. Oh my yeah. bear. <laughs> uh, pretty excited for this birthday person. I hope they enjoy it when we deliver it later today. Since it's Friday, we'll be doing deliveries. And uh I'm glad that I kept those stickers that didn't stick for so many years because now they're really coming out to play. Two years in a bin, everybody wondering what's going to happen to all those stickers that didn't stick. Now it's their time to shine. Now they're atop Gift Mountain. So let's all enjoy Fancy Friday with this little gift wrap that can just stay there because um, I'm sure you have local announcements to share. Yeah, and let's, then I know. We're going to get into two. big, big uh, notebook knowledge drop. Um, saw, I saw one of our best customers out at the Merck yesterday mm -hmm. and the notebook show yesterday, talk of the town, it seems mm -hmm. lots of, lots of knowledge. People are excited to learn about paper sizes. Um, paper sizes we covered paper fun. sizes yesterday. So if you missed it, broadcasts are archived on YouTube so you can catch up there, um, for, uh, gosh, gosh, darn half hour worth of paper size talk probably. Um, yeah. There's a lot, you know. It wasn't perfect. We learned a lot. I still, in my heart, don't understand what's going on with Lloyd Term. There is some bit. goofy stuff going on here. I got to so get out a ruler on those I think bad we, boys. I think we might have them mislabeled. Who knows? Uh, we'll, we'll do some internal investigations on that. Anyway, thanks for joining Wonderfair Home Shopping Network today. Um, we're, we're jumping into part two of our uh, notebook discussion, but after our local announcements, and there's a big announcement today. 
There's a big announcement. Big there. local news. We ate the cinnamon bun oh. at Cellar Door Cafe yesterday, and it floored us. I don't even like cinnamon rolls, except when they're given to me as a gift with love. But like, I wouldn't go out of my way to eat one in a restaurant mm -hmm. until now. The cinnamon roll was a revelation. Uh, it didn't have textural non-synchrony, which is the problem with most cinnamon rolls. It's like, are they hard? Are they chewy? Are they soft? Are they sticky? Figure it out, cinnamon roll. But not this one. You know exactly what you're getting. The perfect combination of chewy and soft and sticky and perfect harmony. It was everything. Plus zingy, lemony icing on top, but not too zingy and yeah. not too cinnamony. Yeah, you know, like when Lewis gave me the cinnamon roll, he's like, have you tried it yet? And I was like, no. And he's like, I think you're going to like it, which is like, OK, he wasn't he wasn't really overselling it, but I knew it was going to be something special. Um, and it was uh, a pretty reserved dude. So yeah. his, his him feeling proud of himself is a pretty big deal. Yeah. Uh, I sent him a text afterwards to say the cinnamon roll was transcendent. Huh? And he's like, cool. Oh. <laughs> cool. Cool. Lewis will be on the show on Monday. So we're going to talk to Lewis about cinnamon rolls primarily, but also about his new business venture, Cellar Door Cafe, which is on 11th Street, um, just behind the uh, new location of Silas and Maddie's. Um, so right there in the Sugar District, you got Silas and Maddie's, you've got the soda shop, and now you've got your cinnamon roll um, go-to. I figured it out. Do you want to know is, yet? Uh, sure, we can. Is we it can. Too soon? We can I'll move on. We can move on. That was the only real announcement I oh, had. Eat a was cinnamon roll. Eat the cinnamon roll. At, you're welcome. And you're going to hear a lot more about it service. on Monday. But um, Cellar Door Cafe, they're only open Thursday, Friday, Saturday right now. They're doing. Um, you can order online. Um, you can just go to Decades website. You'll see an order online link there. I do know they have a um, their own website that connects to the order page, but I can't remember exactly what the URL is. So just go to Decade, order like 30 cinnamon rolls. Actually, there's probably, it looked like he had like 12 maybe a day that he makes. So mm -hmm. go grab one. Reporting back. Re Yesterday okay. during our thrilling um, sojourn through the world of notebook sizing, and we pointed out some of our favorites, specifically Loic Term, because they make a notebook in almost every size, and I happen to have them in a full rainbow, so I was able to do a rainbow gradient to show you a size waterfall that trickled down from the largest A4 all the way down to the tiny A7. But on the journey, we discovered, like, yo, one of these notebooks is not the right size. It didn't look like, specifically, this we know is an A5, but this, which should be an A6, looks too narrow. Discovery, it's not an A6. It's a pocket size conforming more to like a traditional American pocket size notebook. I think it could probably be considered an A6 slim would be my guess, but it's also a little bit short. Ah, no, it's an A6 slim, everybody. So that's fun. Uh, everything else conforms to the A standard scale, um, but slim is not an uncommon size. Uh, Midori, for example, makes a slim version of a notebook. This is a B6 slim. So instead of a full on B6, sorry if you missed yesterday's episode, there's a lot of facts about notebook sizes. Here's a standard B6 notebook. Here's a B6 slim notebook. So whenever a notebook is slim, it's about one inch narrower than its standard size B6. So um, just like Midori makes a B6 slim for people who want to more easily slide their notebook in their pockets, this is why it's called the pocket size, Loic terms size in between tiny A7 and standard A5 is actually an A6 slim. Ah. Fun fact. So oh, if you're looking for a pocket notebook and you're having trouble Maybe you wear those skinny jeans in your pants pockets, just not wide enough for a full on A6, which makes sense because this is pretty sizable in the width department. Uh, check out a slim. You can get slims in the pocket size in this Rodia Unlimited we talked about, which has all the um, perforated pages. Field notes are essentially, they're like technically shorter than an A6 slim, but it's pretty darn close. So little pocket notebooks, just a few. I'm so glad we solved that because it was actually kind of annoying me all evening. Yeah. 
worried about that weird weirdo look term I was in the middle of their line. I just don't want to lie to the people Where more than we from? already do. Well, we got to relabel all the all the. They are not actually labeled A6. They're labeled oh. pocket. Oh, okay. But in my head, I just assumed Leuk term because being German and Germans invented the ISO system, that probably Leuk term was sticking to it. But no, mm. Leuk term agrees. Pockets be skinny, so A6 is B2 wide, so A6 slim. Okay, we've solved it. We solved it. Um, feels good to solve something in this stationary Wagmire. mystery. Stationary mystery solver, Meredith Moore. Ooh, I like it. I mean, I also probably said lots of wrong things, so apologies on that. Um, we're just doing our best. Okay, my teetering pile of Leuk terms. Pile it high. <laughs> Where did you want to start today? Well, we did promise that we would mostly be talking about guts today. So guts. we've talked about basic sizes and a little bit about the basic bindings that might help guide you to your perfect notebook. Um, if you want it to lay flat, you need a lot of signatures, signatures and in stitch there. binding or choose a coil binding. And now you know how to... We're, we're, Quick review, you know how to look for the number of signatures, which is to turn notebook like this and look right down the spine and see yeah. are they all like little stitches there? Look right down its nose. Yep. See what's up. You know what? This Rhodia, which is a very nice web notebook and fountain pen friendly, and um, until a lot of new upstarts came on the market, Rhodia was sort of like the king of the mountain. I think there is a lot of competition now in the great notebooks world, but uh, they, they deserve their place. I'm seeing at least... 10 to 12 signatures in this Rhodia. So all of the lead notebooks that are popular tend to have more. Um, they tend to be more expensive. They It just takes more time. And so if you're looking for something a little less costly, you can certainly find great notebooks uh, with less signatures. And just, it's you don't have to have a lay flat notebook. No, you don't. I'm just you saying. just clip it closed, put something heavy on it, have your cat lay on it. It's yeah. probably going to happen anyway. Right. Which is probably why people who love notebooks often have cats, so that they can keep their notebooks flat. I just realized what a huge benefit Dave is to yeah, us. Yeah, big bonus. Um. Okay. So that was yesterday. Questions coming fast and furious about Dave. A lot Dave, of questions. So I want to address it before we go too long. Yeah. We covered it at the top of the hour. Dave took him to the vet yesterday. The diagnosis currently is cat laryngitis. So hopefully that's Dave's only problem. Um, we're monitoring him closely. Um, he's got medicine. He's got a prescription now. They even got his full name on the bottle, David Mialstein. Yep, Dave Mialstein, right on the pill bottle. Yep. So yeah, he has no other symptoms except that scratchy throat. Um, but we think he might have swallowed something scratchy and then subsequently got throat irritation leading to laryngitis. He, he has been eating tortilla chips out of the bowl at home. So maybe we that scratched up his it's not by It's not, we don't permission. give him permission to do that, no, by the he way. He just snuck one away from us. Yeah. Anyway, that was like two weeks ago. I don't think <laughs> that was the tortilla chips. So, notebooks. Notebooks, let's talk guts. Where do you want to start? Let's spill, Blank, keep, let's it, keep it clean. Spill our guts. Would you like to begin the spill your guts segment of notebooks by telling us a secret? Oh, wow. I did not prepare for that. Okay. Well, do you mm. want to be thinking about a secret I while I start about talking it. about some guts? Mm. Okay. So when we ask a customer what guts they prefer, we usually use that lingo because it's, I can't, I've never thought of something better to explain the internal material, material style of a notebook. Um, there's probably a professional term that I've never bothered to learn and I won't. So here are the top three kinds of guts you'll find in a notebook for now. Uh, your classic blank notebook for people who are sketching and maybe writing and they just don't want to be constrained. That's type one. Type two, the traditional lined notebook, probably the most common and best seller, although it's about to lose its position. Really? We'll talk about that in a second. Really? Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, wow. Uh, big notebook uh, news coming. Big upset. So lined notebooks have been reigning supreme for a long time because uh, at least in most folks we service, folks ride along a line and they'd like them to be straight and steady. And it's just helpful to have lines in a notebook. This is how we were trained. So mm. line notebook, it's a classic, you love it. Um, it's great for journaling, of course. Uh, next up is the graph notebook, which is always trailing behind in popularity, I would say, but the people who love a graph, they know why it's worth it. It's great for sketching, for planning, for, realizing any kind of dimensional drawing in your notebook. It's great if you use your notebook for lists where you want tidy checkboxes, like 
you don't just need lines for rows of text. You also need something columnar, something to split into columns. Columnar. So you can, columnar. Yeah. So if you want to have some columnar pages in your notebook, you probably want a graph or we'll get into this a special kind of line notebook that's designed to make columns. Those were the, for the longest time, Paul, those are the notebooks you could get. Those were the three, the big three. And then, and I don't know when this started, but I'm sure someone's written about it on a blog. Mm -hmm. Doc Grid. Doc Grid. Doc Grid came and was like, move over graph New notebooks. New kid in town. Move over lined notebooks. Yo, blank notebooks. You're cool, but I'm Doc, cooler. Doc Grid's going to like jump in and be like, I'm going to do it all. I do it all. <laughs> so uh, some folks find lined notebooks convenient for keeping your text straight. A Doc Grid notebook can do that too because it's got a dotted line essentially where a line would be. So it's also a graph at the same time because you have all the columns split, all the lines, so all the rows, all the columns, but none of the internal line structure that could be um, like overwhelming on the page. It's just a lot more ink on the page to have a graph or just a line compared to a dot. So there's a lot less visual disruption of a dot grid, yet you can still keep your text straight. You can still keep your columns organized. And suddenly it's much easier to do diagonals and even to start thinking in more curvilinear shapes because the dot grid lends itself to a looser structure. Mm. Wow, dot grid. Ding so dong. smart. Dot grid. We really should have started with the dot grid. Oh no, it's good. It's good to walk through the history, which is that until recently, dot grid didn't even exist. I mean, I thought I'm saying humans should have started with the dot grid. Yeah. Not us today, although also. Anyway, I still love aligned for journaling because the traditional qualities of it feel like a dot grid is so good at organizing, it makes me want to be organized in my thoughts, which is why I love dots in light graphs for list making. But for free flowing thoughts where I just don't want to think about those structures, I do find aligned kind of enhances my journal writing. So I'm more of an agent of chaos in a notebook and I find dots just lend, lend themselves perfectly to that. I didn't Just know ignore was, it all. I didn't know you were. Would you call yourself like a chaotic, like chaotic neutral? I'm or? just like all over the page, you know. Yeah, pure chaos. Yeah, got it. That is actually true. I've seen your notebooks. You kind of use them like a jot pad. Yeah. Just like wherever you've got to dump the info out of your brain when it comes to you, diagonal, where's, sideways. Where's the space where I can <laughs> write in? Okay. Yeah. Get you should down. see the notepad over there by the phone we use to take down notes that hmm. people call in. It's there's bits and pieces torn out of it, like write an address down and then move it to the ship station. It's a real it's wild. So I'm um, glad to know you're on team dot. I'm, I'm also team on dot. I'm yeah. on team dot for my uh, everyday organizing notebook or team light graph, which we'll go into. I love aligned and I want to say this to the graph people out there. You're not alone. Graph are still excellent for doing things like embroidery patterns where you want to draw an X through each tiny graph box. Mm. Graph are also unique in that there is no yet dot grid yet printed with a very tiny grid, but you can get graph notebooks with grids as small as two millimeters, which is quite tiny. Mm. So you can do really finely detailed drawings and designs with a graph that you just can't achieve with a dot. And in fact, I think a dot at that scale would become really visually disruptive compared to the graph. I'm, the smaller the pattern, the more you need more structure. I'm actually in line for a new graph notebook Ooh. probably because I've been working on my Animal Crossing garden. And right. so I've been plotting that out. And shout out to Elizabeth who shared um, some of her um, Animal Crossing uh, note-taking system, mm -hmm. which was great. Loved seeing it. I'm excited Elizabeth to- Elizabeth using a field notes field for notes. their uh, yeah. Animal Crossing Yeah, which adventures. makes sense because they're out there in the field on the island. Mm -hmm. um, maybe I maybe I do want to do field notes. I was thinking more like I need a, something a little bit bigger to plot things out, mm -hmm. but I also need, uh, and this could be a challenge for the episode, find Paul the right. I notebook. already have one in mind and I'm excited to bust it out later to I show need, you. I need something, I think I think I wanna be um, taking down data mm -hmm. of like, okay, what flowers grew on this day in my, I'm, I'm creating a flower laboratory in mm -hmm. Animal Crossing. So, uh, you know, yep. working on my hybrids. Big botany. Yeah. Um, uh, freshman from Instagram yeah. before, we, before we really dig in. Yeah. Uh, as a notebook, as notebook aficionados, what are your thoughts on moleskin? Hmm. You know, when we first began- I feel like we're being set up here. We are. When we first began, <laughs> who's setting us up? 
Uh, let's see. Who's the pitch? Elaine Frisbee. Oh, okay. I mean, I expected to be Anna. If oh, that yeah. was set up, so now I know it's real. Um, so when we first started selling notebooks extensively at Wander Fair, uh, mostly because I love them, uh, and we're a stationary store, so that's legit. Plus, we became an art supply, so we had access to so many catalogs. Um, at that time, Moleskin's quality, the general understanding, belief, and there were many people who tested and proved this through like blogs. Uh, the quality of the paper had just gone down with moleskins, or maybe it was never that high and rhodia paper had come on the scene more prevalently in the US and rhodia's paper was just a little bit better. So moleskin kind of went off the map for us. We, because enough people, we mainly catered to fountain pen users with our notebook selection because they have the hardest time finding good papers at the grocery store. So we not stopped- that big produce stuff. Not that big produce. So we stopped selling moleskins because they're virtually identical to Rhodia in terms of the other features. They're hardback, they're kind of leatherette, they have an elastic strap, they have a bookmark incorporated. And Rhodia came in um, almost as many cute colors. I will say moleskin are a little bit more cute color options. Uh, so that but was sad. Then. It was sad to see it go. Um, and then, Loic term. We were able to get a Loic term account, which we had stayed away from for a long time because another local vendor bought them and we don't like to be competitive against our neighbors, but they stopped carrying the line. So we were like, scoop, 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 pick it up. We're your source in town. Uh, so then we started carrying Loic term, which are yet a third option that's pretty similar to Moleskin. And Loic term has also very good paper. You'll constantly hear rumors of like which Loic terms like maybe their quality's gone down. They actually, the master in particular, one version of it has a different paper in it. Mm. Um, Rhodia and Loic term are actually made, their paper is made at the same paper mill, I believe. In Germany? No, wait. Lots that's of paper Claire, made in Germany. No, Claire Fontaine and Rhodia are made at the okay. same paper mill. Loic term is probably separate. I don't exactly know. Um, anyway, so we stopped carrying Moleskin. However, Moleskin caught wind of the fact that people were really mm. negging on them. There were, and so Moleskin changed their paper manufacturing is the rumor I've heard, and they're actually back on the ups. Okay. So the only thing keeping us from ordering Moleskin now is I am out of space. Out of space. Notebooks. We're trying to diversify a little bit more. I will say that there are a few things Moleskin does that nobody else is really doing. Mm -hmm. There's some specialized notebooks that we maybe even still carry yeah. here and there, like a music notebook that's quite nice um, with staff paper inside. Um, what are the other ones? That's some weird stuff. Might have stuff. a comic layout one, but I can't remember mm. that we should probably be stocking. And um, but that's getting into specialty guts, which we're gonna do at the end. Yeah, we're gonna. Well, have I guess to, we could train. We're gonna have to hold off on specialty guts for a minute. But so they're out there. I'm not here to nag on Moleskin anymore. I think that even though their price is consistent with Rhodia and Loic Term, which we do carry, one reason people might. I have a friend who prefers Moleskin for the singular reason that the paper inside of a Moleskin is ever so slightly creamier in mm. tone. It's a little bit more pigmented than Loic Term, which is itself fairly pigmented, and then Rodeo, which I would consider the brightest paper of the bunch. So something to keep in mind. If you like a really creamy tone, and this person did, they just always prefer to moleskin. There you go. So um, those are facts. We, we, I didn't even realize that we were going to get into paper tones, but paper wow. Tone. We could, we could get, I get know. into it. That's kind of related to guts, so I feel yeah, it, it wasn't is. a side road. Um, that was just a mile marker. So, Should we show, show some folks what a dot grid is in case they've never seen one? Sure. Show I some mean, folks what a dot grid is. This is a new thing. That's a classic dot grid made by Rhodia. Um, dot grid is really beloved in America and Europe. Uh, weirdly, some brands make dot grids geared only for the US market, even though I believe dot grid to be popular worldwide so that's something i'd love to learn more about too is uh are there countries where dot grid's not a thing um that would be interesting to me and probably no one else oh look at those dots just imagine organizing all your thoughts on those dots well, got some thoughts put them on dots so speaking of uh speaking of paper tones you can also we also see a lot of variants in the sort of intensity of the printing on the pages as 100%. well right 100 yeah. percent. let's do a compare and contrast um, ooh, that's very light. Just yeah, that's lighter. really light. So contrast the darkness of these dots. And then the darkest dots I find are in Rhodia's cheaper pads usually, which I don't have an example of out, but 
just something to think about when you're picking out your notebooks, whether it's graph, line, or dot. Not all brands print the color of their dots, lines, and graphs in the same shade. Some will use gray. Oh, yeah. Some will use a richer black. Some will use blue, like my absolute favorite, Midori, uses a blue. And their graph is actually a little bit different, which we'll talk about in a minute. Um, ruh row, Paul, is it going to be me? I'll get it. I couldn't. I guess it shouldn't be me. Because I have to talk to y'all about... Paul from no. Inventory. All right. Paul will briefly step aside to help someone in his special way. Uh, I think we've said enough about dots, have we not? Boy, the word dot just rhymes with a lot. Uh, okay, so we're going to talk about guts. We've gone through the major types, um, lined, grid, blank, dot grid. Now let's talk about some specialty guts of notebooks we carry here at Wonderfair. And perhaps you will hear of one that sounds perfect for your purposes and that you didn't even know it would improve your note taking. So first up, I'm going to show one of my absolute favorite notebooks. Uh, I am afraid for myself because this is by the company Design Works Inc. They are based in the U.S. as a design group, and I'm sure they manufacture elsewhere. Ooh, that's crinkly. Sorry about it. Um, this is a B5 sized notebook, so it's a little bit larger than an A5, and it's a little bit smaller than an A4 which makes it a very nice size that still feels large enough for extensive note taking in class. But it's, and it's a little big for carrying around every day with you, but you could make it happen versus this, which feels like carrying a briefcase around. This feels natural. It's a little closer to eight and a half by 11, which is a standard letter size sheet. So this beautiful notebook I love for so many reasons. Number one, it is um, stitch bound with lots of signatures, even though it has this beautiful cloth covered spine. It's a paper, it's a black paper cover, but all kind of like on the cheaper side of materials. In fact, I think this notebook is like $20, $24. So it's very thick, which is nice. And inside, I call this a specialty guts because this is a multi-ruled notebook, which is to say one notebook with many kinds of guts inside. It begins with lined pages that specifically are like an undated planner page. So at the top, you will have all the months of the year. Below that, a row of um, 31 numbers. And below that, to the right, you have uh, the days of the week. So you could highlight at the top row what day you're journaling on. So it's undated, it always works. And then you can do your list making or your diary entry. Um, you can list out tasks for your staff or your kids or your chores. Uh, it's just a way to do a ruled notebook that has organization built in that I really love. We sell a lot of notebooks with these undated pages, so call us. If you Almost want to talk the whole design works line. Has, they have tons of them. Um, that type of. Yep. We sell pages. one other brand that makes an undated, two other brands that make undated planner pages, Mishmash and um, Stalogy. So we've got others in this camp. Then it switches off into a straight up dot grid. So this is where you plan all your animal crossing stuff. The first planner sections where you make your notes every day about what villagers said to you. That was funny. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. And then you're a flower planning and mapping. I want a graph for that. Oh, okay. Fair yeah. enough. And then you go into blank, which is where you design your cool outfits and animal crossing. So you can just keep track of the cool outfits you wore. Uh, you could do a lot of different things. It also has two incorporated bookmarks, which I love. We'll talk about notebook features maybe separately, but I'll mention them as I go if something has a bookmark because it's always a perk. Um, although you can provide your own bookmark. So I love this notebook very much. And that would be a gut type that we call multi-ruled, which is only to say one notebook, many options inside. Next up in the world of specialty notebook guts, uh, since we talked about that undated planner, we sell a lot of notebooks, particularly ones made by the brand Baron Fig that are designed for organizing. Um, we have diary-based organizers, we have bullet journaling organizers that have special maybe uh, how, tips for how to organize your thoughts. They might have guidance, like guided questions inside. This is a brand new product from Baron. Brand Fink new, new to Wonder Called Fair. the Do Work Journal. Paul will show that closer in a second. Um, inside on every page is a little bit of extra material. It says day overview. It has a pre-listed um, sort of like fill in the bubble lined list for you to make a to-do list. And then it has all of these cool like 
metrics on the side for you to measure how much your yield was that day, if you achieved your tasks or not, the total hours you worked. Um, it has a column here for wins so that you can mark and Mostly these are designed not because you need to know what your wins were, but because it reminds you to focus on positive outcomes from your day of work and to think about what your wins might have been so you can reflect on something positive at the end of the day. And uh, it also has a little um, tab set for location. So whether your notes were made that day at work, at home, or I believe this is a Wi-Fi signal. So they are apparently making the case that internet is neither work nor home, but a third place that's wild. Maybe they mean you were working remotely from like an airplane. So some of those features wouldn't make sense for me, but I feel like there's a lot of people for whom that notebook would be a really um, useful work tool to track your progress, um, whether you're working on maybe a big writing project that's self-propelled or you need to report back to someone and you need a better way of tracking what you did so you can tell them how great you are at working remotely so they never make you go back to the office. You know what I'm saying? I know you're out there, folks. You want to stay working at home. Show them how productive you are. This is a good notebook to do it. Put it on the company card. You know what I'm saying? This is my A number Get one. Two on the company card. This is my number one. Put it on the company card. I don't card think we. Pick. I don't think we bought enough of these. I probably for didn't. folks to put on their company card. And it card, might but... be a limited edition. I'm kind of worried uh, about that. Yeah, they'll they'll keep it around a, a minute. Uh, FYI, this is online. Oh, good Unusual for products we're showcasing on the show. Um, but I managed to get a few of these oh. Baron Fig specialty notebooks online, as well as um, uh, some of their other main 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 notebooks. That I don't I can't remember if we showed them yesterday or mm -hmm. not, but they're beautiful. You saw that uh, box. Let's it, just give a shout out to this box. I know they they do such a nice job. As Randy pointed out, they're slightly smaller than A5, and the box makes it look like the same size on your shelf um, or in store displays. Importantly. Uh, I guess you can save the box and store it yeah. in your in the box on your shelf if yeah. you want. This um, is a little bit of an extra perk. Not very many companies ship their notebooks in a box. Um, it is to some level maybe unnecessary, but the box is very sturdy and would work great as like a little keep, mm -hmm. like a little tray nice for and tidy. keeping. Um, yep. uh, so I love Baron Fig as a company. While I have a Baron Fig specialty guts notebook out, I'm going to point out that they make a lot of great specialty notebooks, which is why we've carried them for so long since probably the first year they were in business. Yeah, we were pretty, we were pretty, pretty quick early, on the draw early adopters. Um, they're based out of New York and they are always collaborating with like, or like they collaborated with James Clear, who's one of the lead like bullet journaling style organization experts. Mm. They made a special bullet journal with them, him. Mm. I'm gonna go with them because I'm not sure. Um, they make a journal just for recording dreams that's very beautiful, a dream journal. They make a journal for recording um, lists uh, called Gather that's just oh. a journal for tracking like books you've read, trees you saw, birds you saw, and then you can rate and review them. They have like a reviews journal too. Yeah, uh, they, they have, have a recipe journal yep, called Saver. Saver. Um, um, for tracking in a book form your favorite recipes, which makes your recipes instead of in kind of like a sloppy recipe box. If you're trying to make like an heirloom or keepsake gift for a bridal shower or a graduation gift, a recipe journal that you can pass around to friends and fill up with recipes that are shared is a great way to do it because it's book bound and cloth that looks beautiful in the kitchen yeah, they're uh, pretty, with the cookbooks. Pretty sick. Yeah. Yeah. Love the Saber journal. We just restocked just it. Just got five more in stock. It's up on the website now. I, I'm bad at ordering. I <sighs> ordered way too few. But who knows what to order during I don't know, coronavirus yeah. time. We can always order more. Yeah. Uh, they ship very quickly. Um, they also make great pins, but that's a whole other story. But you can get a pin to match every mm. single notebook they make, mm. which is fun. Do they make one that make, matches this? I think this? Their, newest, the new one their new this? special edition matches it. FYI, the color on this, Focus Blue. It Oh, Focus Blue. Focus Blue is I, the color. I, I feel like there was science to make that decision, and I respect it. Yeah, I'm guessing, yes. I, and it does. It's a soothing, it's soothing, soothing blue there. But it, it's energizing at the same time. Is it? OK. I find it pretty. It kind of vibrates your eyeball. Cool. Doesn't right. make you want to like, like a light pink notebook would make me want to like, get a cuppa and like curl up with my cat in a chair and maybe not work. That's just me. Uh, I use a like cream color notebook, so who knows? Anyway. Kent shouts out Baron Fig saying the mm. mini notebooks mm. 
They're our so cute. His favorite oh, these little pocket guys? sketchbook. Yeah. Yeah, that I'm makes sense. I'm assuming it's Kent. the Vanguard, actually. Maybe. I don't know. I think he might use the hardback because they that provides like a sturdy surface to draw on. Ooh, maybe. Um, I could be wrong about that. Kent can tell us. Um, I definitely know artists who buy specifically the blank Baron Fig with the hardback because it's a tiny pocket sized full on sketchbook. It's still thick enough to like take a while. Mm -hmm. um, and again, having a hardback in your notebook ensures that even if you're on a subway, if that's ever a thing again, or, you know, you're in, you're in a cafe, you're out in the park, you have a hard surface to draw on. Um, little paperback books are great because they fit neatly in your pocket and don't weigh much, but it can be hard if you've ever tried to like get your witch hand going oh, yeah. and like crimp it and draw a good sketch on a wobbly notebook. That's not happening. Uh, I digress. Can't, I agree with your shout out to the good tiny notebook. Out. It's a good one. Baron Fig, love them. Um, so that's one specialty, specialty gut guts. notebook. What from other Baron kind of Fig. specialized guts do we, we have? We got Meredith? guts, babe. We got guts for days. Rhodia makes a meeting notebook. That's what it's called, the meeting book. Here's probably my favorite size of it in the ice color way. Mm -hmm. I gotta say, Rhodia's got this whole branding thing. They're black and orange, and they don't want to hear about it. But yeah. folks. Some notebooks they make are kind of ugly because they just won't relent on that orange strap no matter what color the notebook is. And sometimes they have zebra print inside, which is wild. Anyway, that was me talking some smack on Rodia, which otherwise makes perfect notebooks. The meeting notebook in particular, it's very beautiful and classy with the white cover and the silver ink. It has a matching silver wire binding, which I think is a thoughtful detail. Clever. And I see Rhodia doing the right thing with the wire binding. It's a double ring, of course, for sturdiness. And then you just flip it open to your note page and it's gonna be ready for you to pay attention in that meeting. It's got a date line, a chunk of all the way across lines at the top. That's for you to write kind of the meeting overview or maybe to make a list of who was there if you're the secretary. And then it's got a slightly smaller column for notes. And then off at the right has a very small column that's specifically for listing actions that need to be taken. Because if you've ever been in a meeting where like, you're probably wasting a bunch of time covering some topics. Yeah, if you don't you come don't out of there with action items, what's the point? You shouldn't have been in the meeting. If that there are meeting should items, have been an email. Yes, it should. And the email should have been, here's the action items. So I love this notebook because it in the meeting, if things get off track, it helps you refocus. Hey, I don't have anything in my action items list. We need to do that. Uh, so I love a meeting notebook. Put it on the company card. Put it on company cover. Uh, so that's a specialty kind of notebook uh, that we're kind of on the segment, if you're just joining us, and because I need to remind myself what I'm doing here. We're on the segment talking about specialty guts specifically that are for helping organize um, differently from just a basic line, graph, dot grid, or blank. So I think my last but not least on that front is going to be, we already talked about the company Design Works Inc. They made that beautiful multi-ruled notebook, but they also make notebooks, as Paul mentioned, that are purely that design um, planner organizer style with date lines at the top for you to mark every day. And then they have just nice line pages inside. And this beautiful notebook has a kind of unique coil binding that has a gap in the middle. What's that for? I don't know. Oh, okay. What do you think? I thought I was going to learn what that was for. I, I am perplexed by it, if I'm honest. Um, Maybe it's for, um, you know, sticking, sticking something in, you know, like. Uh, I don't know. Honestly, my only theory is it does look cool. It has an industrial look that is true to the brand. It saves both weight and materials. I can't think of, I guess someone's, I hope will tell me why the, there's a gap in the wires. There's one other brand that makes a gapped wire notebook. It's called Logical Prime. And importantly, it's by a Japanese brand. So uh, Design Works here in the US and Logical Prime, the only two I've ever seen doing that, but maybe it's a whole thing. Could be an aesthetics thing. Yeah, I'd love to find out. Yeah. Let us know if you have any ideas about why there's a gap yep. here. All right, so those are extremely specialty guts that um, kind of are purpose-driven. There's also specialty guts that are still sort of open-ended, like dot graph, blank, and lined. And I'm just going to go through some basics on them so you'll know they exist. And if you want to buy them, you'll know what words to use. First of all, if you uh, feel nostalgic for the school paper you used as a child that had horizontal blue lines and a vertical red line along the left margin 
you'll remember this. Yep. Classic. That's a very common paper type. It's um, most often now called margin paper, but the official name of that paper, I believe, and could have gotten this, my wires could have gotten crossed because of translations and the weirdness of catalogs, but I believe it's called Cornell ruling. Oh. So a Cornell ruling will have a left column that is narrower than the right. And generally they are in blue and red. That's pretty standard, Okay. but you can do it in whatever. And it's probably still a Cornell. So here's an example of a kind of like hybrid of graph and Cornell or margin ruling made by one of my absolute favorites, Life Brand. They make really good fountain pen friendly, smooth paper with good signatures. It lays pretty flat. It's fun to write on and it has a graph everywhere, but it does have a red vertical columnar line so that you can use it for taking a log or for anything where you're kind of splitting your data into two sets with rows, but also columns. So that's the margin in the graph. You can also buy the margin notebook in the standard line. We have an example of that here. So this is your classic school notebook, blue and red, Paul will show. It's very beautiful. I think it's nostalgic and there's something kind of warm about returning to the notebook paper of your youth, but not the crappy quality of it. So this is a super high quality, more nostalgic version of that. So there's some Cornell rulings for you. Love them. I love a column. Yeah. I'm just going to admit it. Put your data in there. Put your data. I just really like numbering my lists or making like bullet points. And I like to make sure that they align perfectly. So I really need that in my life. That reminds me of a notebook type I didn't grab and should have. I'm going to have to go get one later. Um, here's something kind of wild. Speaking Ooh, of hybrids. Yeah. This is a notebook kind of more recent on the market. FOB Coop is the brand. When you see it in the store, it looks like this because they put this kind of ugly but important explainer sheet about all the ways to use it but you just tear that off when you buy it and then you have a beautiful blank chipboard cover in gray and inside you will find that this is a plus sign ruled so what dot would be in a dot grid it's a plus sign to even better help you think of it's less visually disruptive than a graph but it gives you a little bit of extra square structures but then as if that wasn't special enough with the pluses inside each plus at a diagonal so that you can do perfect angles with this notebook is a cross, right? That's right. Wait, there's extra pluses. Wait, and then no, every, no. I, it's not in inches because it's in centimeters, but probably every five centimeters or so is a darker version of an X. So you don't have to get out a ruler to measure size and you can easily draw scale drawings. Yeah, that was hard to explain. It's, it's all doing... pluses, some darker, some lighter. No, but they're ones. X's. No, See? they're. Oh yeah, what's going on there? It's doing so much. This notebook oh, is wow. doing so much. I didn't even notice that. If you need a graph notebook because you like to use it for designing and sketching to scale, I think this is a great one to try because having those incorporated subtle darker marks, just like on a ruler, where a darker mark indicates quickly to your eye, like, oh, I've gone another inch. Yep. This is just so handy for sketching and drawing. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure that I'd use it for list making because it it makes me want to do geometry. Um, but on the cover, they're showing people using it for like mind mapping and stuff, which I also think could be cool for flow charts. Ooh, this would be great for flow charts for people in debate. Anyway. That's the notebook. FOB. We, uh, that's unique. We don't have any other notebooks like that. No, it's think. unique. It's unique to the brand. They might have even patented it. I don't know if you can patent notebook paper styles, but maybe they did. Uh, wow. So that's a specialty gut. That's very special. Let's talk about uh, other kinds of hybrids. So that was a hybrid of like graph and dot and isometric, right. which would be uh, diagonal. Ooh, I didn't even bring out an isometric. Oh my gosh, I have so many notebooks. Huh, it's great. Um, bury me in notebooks. Just like carve out like a big notebook. Noted. Okay. Um, but my ashes. Okay. Okay. Great. Um, cool. So this is another product by Baron Fig. You can tell we're fans because I feel like they see notebook problems and they solve them. And that's their whole deal. Uh, problems you don't even know you had. For example, do you sometimes find yourself thinking I need a little bit of structure, but I'd also like a little bit of flexibility? A lot of people come asking for this. This is a half dot grid, half blank. So on the left page, you're gonna have a dot grid. On the right page, you're gonna have a blank. So you can do listing and then sketching along a model. 
You can do your list here and then your pressed flower on the blank page. Uh, there's no end to what you can do with that kind of multi-rule where the facing pages are opposite. Um, we sell other notebooks that have multi-ruling in this style, specifically by the brand Cognitive Surplus. Oops, I accidentally grabbed Dockrid. Cognitive Surplus makes beautiful notebooks, one of the most decorative notebooks we sell. Um, and they frequently make multi-rules that are graph and blank or graph and lined. But heretofore, I've never had a dot and blank notebook, but thank you, Baron Fig. That is called the, the Work Play. Work play. Um, it's the third edition, I think. The first two sold out. This is a third one, and it will probably sell out. And then once again, I will and have it no comes back every year or two. It's just like the McRib, but... Yeah, so Work Play is back. That's work plays back. Work plays back. And unlike the mint grib, like once you have one, you're probably going to keep enjoying it. Right. And you won't be like, oh, that wasn't so good. I think so with good. mint grib, you forget. You forget it's not that and good. And then you get excited about it's the It's all about the hype with the mint grib. Yeah. While for some reason, Baron Fig does not get the hype they deserve. They got in a weird space with the extreme perfectionist stationer, stationary, like online community kind of early on. Oh, who yeah. decided they were like, below their notice and had messed up too much with Kickstarter awards. Um, I have a real soft spot for people who struggle with Kickstarter awards because that stuff's hard. So they will always be one of my <laughs> absolute favorites. They make a great product. The paper is good. The binding is good. The notebooks are creative. The, the price is good. They always arrive in perfect shape. We anyway, like them. We like we them. We just like them. We just like them. Um, okay, that was a dot and blank multi-rule. What other weird stuff you got? I got, I, I've mostly gotten to the bottom of my weird stuff pile because I did forget to bring an isometric notebook over, which is to say a notebook designed um, with a, like an angular pattern for doing 3D renderings. Generally, that's what they're used for. Um, I feel like I need to go get a notebook to show that's um, a hybrid. So while I do that, would you mind showing the people this is almost like a specialty guts that's so special i don't even know if we can consider it guts or if it's an accessory but paul's going to show mm. you a notebook that i first met in new york and fell in love and i'm the only one that loves Just it Just the one of the least popular notebooks we've ever sold it, i'm the only it's, it truly is and i don't get it i because think people I are not it. it's yeah. kind of pricey it is right it's like mm -hmm. 30 something well it's shipped from portugal which cost an arm Boy, I cost and a, a leg, load. We and really blew it on that most one. of my torso. So uh, I'm going to go get that notebook while you show the okay. people the least popular notebook at Wonder Fair ever. Yep. Okay. It's called the Fawn, the notebook Fawn. That's the color. Oh, that's the color. Okay. Well, it is uh, probably what would be considered a um, multi-subject notebook, like your traditional uh, Mead big supermarket brand. Um it's over here, of course. Uh -oh. <laughs> what to do? Answer it. <laughs> um, you know, your big supermarket mead brand, you've, you've had their five subject notebooks. I used to get them all the time in high school. And he used like, uh, just like 12 pages. And then you're like, boy, this takes up a lot of space. Well, not so with this one. Um, this is a little bit more modest, as you can see here. Um, we're not talking about real a real big chunker here. Each section probably has about ten to fifteen pages ballpark. It might even be maybe be like ten pages. Um, so um, what you have here is an organization system where you have these little tabs that stick out and easily allow you to jump into each section. Um, so pretty nice and simple there. You can label your tabs, of course. It's sort of like a classic file. I'm going to pop off this camera just to show this on Instagram. Beautiful. Love these tabs. They're so great. There we go. Um, All right, so that's our least popular notebook. Um, I think people just didn't get it, but um, another thing you can see here is, you know, like each section has its own color and that's reflected really beautifully in the seams, almost impossible to see. Uh, no, you can see it. 
Okay, great. Yep, you can see the um, each what what are they called? Signatures. Each signature reflected as a different color here. That is super nice. Love it. Okay, so that is uh, just just thirty two dollars, and you can have that unpopular notebook that maybe maybe you will find some love for. Um, Phone keeps ringing, people are popping up at the door. I got left talking about notebooks when Meredith is the one who actually knows stuff. So um, let's see what we got here. Um, on the specialty guts, let's see. I'm gonna move on to, uh, we don't get a lot of inquiries for this one, um, So, I'm, but I know what it is, so I'm glad I get to flex a little bit here. Um, this is called a French ruled paper. Um, so this is a specialized line that is really designed for, I think, learning a bit about calligraphy and how letter forms work. So it's a line that's really heavily divided into thirds. You can see really minute lines there. Um, and each line has three sections. So I think the idea is your letter forms are divided into thirds um, as you're learning. And so that gives you a little bit more structure. Oops, that got wild. That gives you a little bit more structure as you're learning your letter forms. Did I do it right with French rule? I sound like it. Yeah, French rule. Yeah. So we only sell one or two uh, notebooks with French rule. This is like a $3 floppy old workbook, but it's on pretty nice paper. So it's Claire Fontaine paper. Um, it's great for learning so, and practicing calligraphy. That's the idea. Yep. Um, okay, I got the notebook I went to get, and then like seven things happened. Yes, sounded pretty crazy. It got really wild. Mm -hmm. I don't even want to go into it. I don't have time. But um, yo, uh, here's the logical prime that's going to do everything I need it to. First of all, it's got that weird thing where Not there's a split in the wire. Okay. But um, I mentioned that... Um, in hybrid journals, there's a type that's like generally lined, but that does have very subtle dots breaking those lines into smaller graph areas. And then at the top, in many notebooks that are lined and designed for columnar note taking, there's going to be a few tick marks at regular spaces across the top. This one specifically has a dot in the middle to show where you could perfectly split the page in two with the ruler to get two perfect columns. Or maybe you want to make just one column so it's very easy to quickly rule a notebook like this vertically because they have guidelines for you across the top and bottom. So if you wanna buy a lined notebook, you might want some columns, but you wanna control where the columns go because whatever your data is, it's like not always the same width. Like sometimes you need really wide columns for your flower names. And sometimes yes. you need really skinny columns for your balloon popping history. Right. Yeah. You want to cat categorize every balloon. Yeah. So uh, this is a great example of that. And it has a you. There's no way this is going to show up. Well, uh, I know we don't have much time. Not a lot of time. How much time do I have? Did you grab an isometric? No. Nope. OK. Well, Kent, Kent chimed in with a comment that this illustration here on the cover of the Do Journal is a good example of what you can do with an isometric pad, mm -hmm. which is to get that perspective there. Mm -hmm. So thanks, Kent. Yeah. Good tip. Good tip. So we talked about the least popular. Yeah. Um, no one was convinced. Nobody was like, ooh, need that. It's just me. Yeah, Sorry. I know. Your turn. I don't mind. I, I just don't know how much time I have. And I have no way how to tell. So. Folks, join me on the final leg of today's notebook journey. We have mostly made our way through specialty guts. We talked a little bit about standard guts. I did not yet have a chance to show you inside of my favorite graph notebook by Midori, which while being a graph, I'm just gonna point out what's different about it so you'll know it is special. It's no mere graph. It is both printed in light blue on cream, so visually to your eyes, it's very restful. Um, it's not high contrast, but at the, where normally a graph would make a complete box, Midori instead does ruled lines for rows and then the vertical lines that go across in columns never actually touch the line above them. So it's like a graph with a gap at the top of each row, 
which for me helps it feel like my thoughts are still flowing left to right, like in a horizontal bar and they're complete, but it's really easy to use it visually for columns and rows. So for me, it is the ultimate graph paper ruling. I don't think it has a name because I think it's just Midori doing it. Oh, wow. Just and Midori. it's just, it's real. You, you actually could use a graph by Midori for years and not notice that it's split at the top. Um, unless you obsessively look at notebook guts all the time, like me. That's right. I only learned about that like a couple weeks ago. Oh, really? Yeah. Cool. Well, it's uh, it's great. It's a great notebook. It's a great graph paper. I really like light blue as the graph um, printing color. I like it for the dots as well, or light gray are my preferences. So when you call us on the phone, if you're looking for a notebook, and if you know you're not going to want a very high, high contrast dot or graph, just let us know that and we can guide you toward lower contrast. Now, How much time? Do just I like have. three minutes. Okay, let's talk about the paper inside your notebook. Okay, we gotta work it quick. We will. Not just the paper in terms of how it's printed and what the ruling is or what the guts are, but what is it actually made of? So really briefly, I'll give an overview of the types of paper you can have in a notebook that are basic. First of all, if you're using a fountain pen in your notebook or any kind of super inky thing other than an alcohol marker, which is gonna be different, um, you're going to want to be thinking about the weight of your paper. Generally, anything over 80 grams per square inch is acceptable for fountain pen. But as you go up the up the line to like 90 gram, 100 gram, 110, 120, your paper is getting thicker and denser and your ink is going to bleed, feather and show through less. So if it's really important to you not to have those things in paper, look for higher quality papers like Lloyd Term, for example, depending on which specific notebook. Um, this bad boy is usually 90, I think. They're usually 80 or, or 90. 80 or 90. Um, it's really 80 here. 80 here. Yeah, I think it's the master specifically has some 90 gram, which I don't know why only the master would be higher, but 80 gram is acceptable. 80 gram also means the paper, there's going to be more of it in one notebook because it's less thick. So if having a lot of pages is important to you, you got to find the perfect combination of heavyweight paper versus uh, enough pages in your notebook. Because once you're at 120, like in a mixed media sketchbook, for example, you're probably only gonna have about like 30 to 40 pages in your notebook, which may be not good enough for you right. if you write a lot. So um, paper weight is one thing to consider. But Tomo River paper is perfectly good for fountain paper. Yes. Uh, and that's a really light paper. So I'm specifically currently speaking about standard papers mm -hmm. that are gonna be usually European or Japanese milled. Um, they're basically like a slurry of paper pulp that's pressed into a paper with machines and science and math and magic. Um, but every now and then there comes a paper from a special region that's just wild. Much like there's one kind of limestone pr from Bavaria that has the chemistry to make perfect uh, lithograph prints. You can make them with other stuff, but they're not going to be the same. There's a region in Japan, Tomoe, River is the paper name. I don't know how exactly that, that might be the name of the region as well. Like the Tomoe River might be a place, but uh, it's also kind of a company as well, but other companies can make what is essentially Tomoe River paper. So that's something to not be confused by. An example would be, here's the Tomoe River branded notebook. And this paper from this particular region for, re for reasons of science and their method that I don't understand Maybe it's the material plant material they use to make the paper or something. Maybe it's like mm -hmm. potato starchy. I don't exactly know, but I'm sure it's on the internet and I should learn it and it will later. Uh, it's extremely thin, but it is very dense and resistant to being to absorbing ink. So when you write with fountain pens on it, instead of going into the fibers, fountain pen inks really sit on top of this paper, which does a couple of things. Number one, it means your ink looks fantastic because none of it is flashed into the paper which really enhances its color and its sheen. Number two, it takes forever to dry because mm. none of it got absorbed by the paper. Right. So it's kind of slow drying, which will um, not be perfect for everyone with inkier pens. But if you mostly use like a roller ball or ball point that are quick drying, that's not a problem. Um, and number three, because it's thin, when you write on it, even though it won't bleed through, it will show through a lot because the paper itself is very thin. How's my time? 30 seconds. That's some of paper. It's a really good paper. I really like it. Midori also makes a nice paper. It is toothier. This is just a preview because next uh, time three we're Three minutes. You can't talk about paper in three we're minutes. Gonna I don't know what you're trying to do I here. I know. I'm Because I want to say I'm going to sink my teeth into 
papers on Monday. That was just a preview. So thanks for joining us here on the Wonder Fair Home Shopping ah! Network this week. We'll be back on Monday uh, at noon. Um, and we will see you then. We'll have Louis Wagen Tocolino from Decade and the new Cellar Door Cafe. So see you then. Oh, I guess we'll talk about paper on Tuesday then. It's too much. I I kind of knew it would be three episodes of Notebooks. Yeah. Sorry, YouTube. I just like love Notebooks. And I don't even know everything yet. So I can research Tomorrow River before uh, Tuesday. Look forward to it.